Hello, it's nice to see you here. In this video, I will show you my garden in December. I have been working so hard in this past two years to create like a winter garden, winter wonderland in my backyard because you know in winter all the flowers are gone and I just wanna go out in the garden in winter and you know still have the joy that I have in spring, summer and fall. So I will show you that and also I will show you my greenhouse in December and a little tips and tricks you know how you create this kind of winter garden in your backyard and I think at the end of this tour, I will show you my Christmas decoration in my front yard too. All right, let's go. Here's the bell that Jason just set up and the Christmas tree with traditional light bulbs. And those are reindeer and the Santa that Jason just set up the other day. Here's my driveway and we have the bushes that would turn color starting in November. And then each of the bush has its own color. And we do that not on purpose, but it turned out so nicely. Um, you can see here there's some green, some brown, like light yellow brown and green. So this creates like dimension to the garden. Um, here we have abelia bush and the tree there and the tree here is fake. <laughs> This garden in summertime, we have a lot of succulents here. And you know, in wintertime, we just put fake Christmas tree to create like, you know, Christmassy in front of our house. On the left here is oak leaf hydrangeas. It has beautiful big flowers in summertime. The flower turn dry and brown in November and December. And you know, it also has this beautiful foliage this time of the year too. Next to it, I have this bush that provide like the berries. And I plant it here on purpose because in winter time, this oak leaf hydrangea is going to drop all the leaves. And you know, at that point, I will have some evergreen on this spot. And it will pick up the bush here behind the which gonna create such like a uh, winter interest to my front yard. On this side of the house, this plant is Jason's favorite plant because it has unusual leaves. This is Mahoney and it bloomed in December. You can see the flowers start blooming. And about next month, it's going to turn to become berries and the birds love it and here's the path to my garden i just love it so much also the leaf on the ground too and on the right side here i have the spirea which starting turning color about last month and it will slowly drop the leaves which make you know this time of the year even more interesting and right here is abelia it's semi evergreen, that means it's going to keep the leaves as long. Maybe like until it gets really, really cold. And it also has flowers in summer. And it will leave the flower seed pot like that, you know, until it gets really, really cold. And this is one of the benefits why we grow semi evergreen, not just all evergreen trees and shrubs. And here's my backyard. You can see there are a lot of trees and evergreens here. And I just love it so much. Except the English ivy. So English ivy in our backyard, it is pretty, it's so pretty. But they are so invasive. We have to keep cutting it back to stop them from spreading. And I think eventually we are going to replace the English ivy with some kind of native evergreen ground cover. And here's the holly tree. Here, and here's the holly tree that we love it so much because it's right 
by our breakfast room. When we first moved to this house, I thought about cutting this holly tree. But when it got to winter time and we sat at that breakfast room and looking back to our backyard, you know, we feel like, oh my God, we, we should not cut this evergreen tree, especially the holly, because it gives us so much joy, you know, watching the tree from inside the house. And behind the couch deck is for sepia bush. It have very bright yellow flowers in springtime, but I start loving it now. It has yellow stem and give the contrast to the evergreen that I have in the garden next to it. And it give a wonderful contrast to the holly tree and evergreen that I have in my garden. When we moved to this house, we didn't have any evergreen in this garden. Then I start, you know, plant some bushes and lavender to give it winter interest. And I have a lot of ground cover in this garden too because it's so nice to look at some green instead of mulch. That's my preference. And here's the lavender. In winter time, when I feel like down i just come out here rub on the lavender and smell it doing that make me feel better and in just a few months there will be a lot of tulips pop up from this garden on the other side because it get a lot of sun so i plant the coming rose there this is a second year but eventually it's going to come on that ladder and um underneath that ladder i have all kind of flowers because this side of the house get a lot of sun and the wall protect the plants from the wind you can see here a lot of plants here are still green and when we look from the window seeing the green you know in my garden in december it just make me feel good <laughs> these are oriental poppy that will bloom maybe early summer that's the hollyhock that will go very very tall in summertime and make a big statement to this garden on Martha day i will have the irises here bloom and i'll cut the flowers from my roadside stand and on this side of the house here is our first shed which is right underneath evergreen trees on the right is cedar and on the left is white pie this just give us a feeling of you know being in a winter wonderland or like vermont but in fact we are in new jersey <laughs> and right underneath that is our second shed and next to it is the spiria it will bloom in very early spring and it will provide white little flowers for me to use in my bouquet and next to the spiria right there is mock orange which smells so good although they don't have any leaves now but you know the location of the bush on top of the evergreen ground cover next to the shade underneath evergreen tree they just make this garden look more natural and you know pretty on their own way and here is my woodland garden you know in winter time when it snows i love to walk on this path i feel like i go on hiking and more than that I will have this hella boys blooming I think just next month let me find if I have some blooming now oh my gosh yeah they actually blooming now oh so cute hello look at that I'm not sure if you can see or not, but 
I feel like our lawn is greener than the neighbor. <laughs> I know it's bad to say that, but I have to say it because my point is when you have trees, when you have shrubs protect your garden, you know, they will stay greener than having no protection. I just watched a documentary video and they talk about trees communicate to each other to protect each other and they also protect the little plants underneath them because the little plants will give them some kind of benefits like protect the ground you know keep the roots warm so just a little thing that I want to share with you and Jason been collecting this rock because eventually we're gonna use this rock for our you know garden border like this but we're gonna do you know everywhere in our garden because we just love the natural look of the garden and in front of you here is our campsite <laughs> I know the wind keep blowing everything all over the place um, and next to the campsite is our pond in winter time we slow down feeding the fish because they are you know kind of slow down too they start hibernating and Jason, you know, set up that bubbles underneath the pond to um, prevent the pond from freezing. But oh my gosh, the water plant's still going. I don't like this netting at all, but it will protect the pond from the leaves. We don't want the leaves to go in the pond because it will make the water bad. You know, because it will rot in the water. Also, it will protect the fish from the birds too. And here's our vegetable garden. Inside that little hoop is ranunculus. I fell growing ranunculus for three years already. So I don't think I'm qualified to talk about it yet. That is Chinese celery that I use for cooking. They are winter hardy. And on the left here, I still have some lettuce growing. Look at that. And that is, I think, rosemary. Yeah. Oh my god, I love it so much. And here, underneath the rosemary, I have the ranunculus that's tried to grow back from last year. Which is good. See, they don't even need protection. It's so weird. Sometimes they like to be protected but sometimes they just survive on its own. Here's my cottage garden. It looked pretty messy if you closed up but if you look from far away from the house they are just fine. Yeah from this angle they look so much better because of the structure of the border. I have the path in the middle and then I have the holly right there with the yellow berries and you know semi evergreen shrubs there and the hydrangea seed head right there um, and also the Canada anemone growing on the path I don't cut back a lot of stuff in my garden because look at that it just look natural and pretty on its own that's my opinion but I can you know like give it a haircut a little bit for example this is landscape salvia that has the purple flower in summertime you know it's kind of messy and block the other plant behind it and it doesn't give you know the beauty that i like it to do so i can just cut it back like this um and most of the time you know the stem i just chop it up and feed it back to the ground so you just maintain the garden the way you kind of organize the house you know something that look messy you put it away and as you see here I don't blow the leaves out from my garden because the leaves will break down by summertime and it will feed the soil it will become fertilizer and it will become like compost to feed my flowers if you like your garden to look more organized you can just you know 
push the leaf in the garden and um, you know open up the path it will look more neater but I don't do this because it's so much work maybe in um, next month when I am more available but I'll show you I'll just do this um, maybe cut this this off you know make it look more clean more organized but you don't have to totally clean everything and the leaves will also help protect the plants in the garden too Oops. there you go this look more like a path but it will become messy again in just a few days oh my gosh I still have some Roses blooming. This is my favorite rose. It has the yellow flowers and it has like some stripe of pink right there. Just like lollipop. My plan on this garden is to have some more evergreen shrubs on this side of the garden. So I plan that, you know, Euronymous right there, it will eventually become like a big bush. Um, if the groundhog don't eat it all and in the front I probably gonna plant maybe holly you know in between the hydrangeas and in front of you there is my new garden I have been dumping a lot of old potting soil because I love to recycle stuff and also I save money from buying more compost and here is the gnome house that Jason created a path there to make it like an island. All right, here's the greenhouse in December. It's in transitioning to Christmas. I already plan to decorate for Christmas, but I don't have the time yet. I want to show you what is still green in here. This is um, strawberries. Oh, the strawberry here. Look. 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 Uh, and here my sweet pea. It's gonna stay like this for a while. See, I just pinch it so it branch out from the bottom. Look like that. And this side of the greenhouse, I have more strawberries there and more sweet pea. Okay. In spring, I'm going to train them up, 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 and hang it with that beam. And then it's gonna bloom beautifully. The tomatoes are done. I'm going to clean it up pretty soon. Um, the temperature now in the greenhouse is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So, so my greenhouse is pretty empty. But it's going to be filled with decoration pretty soon. Here's my little succulents. And the lavender. Baby lavenders. I'm gonna leave it here. And in the front, I have some latest and also um, Chinese celery that I use for cooking on this side I still have the <laughs> Asian hot peppers cilantro and the green onion I make cooking video on maybe last two video this is kind of my favorite spot in a greenhouse I would sit in the couch right there and I would like maybe play with my phone and I will look outside the greenhouse and you know I will see that little hill you know when I walk out there will be roses on both sides and I think some rose still bloom look and that is the holly behind it I am going to 
maybe put Christmas lights on it. And when we are outside the greenhouse, we see through that molo side, which is grand, grand um, Jason grandparent um, last name. And here's my wildlife garden. It look pretty messy, but it's also um, look natural. It's make my garden look more lively. And on the right hand side here is my um, cut flower production garden. They look pretty ugly. Uh, no, they're not ugly. I'm not supposed to say that to my garden. Um, they're just, um, you know, in a dormant mode. And the reason I have this evergreen um, blue spruce, the holly with that, like cedar maybe, and the holly. And um, I have the abelia and some azalea there. It's to block the mess, you know, behind this part of the garden. Also, I do the same thing on this side too. So in winter time, when I see my garden from the house and from, you know, this angle, I can't even see the mess in the back okay so i kind of leave the back garden more wild a lot of leaves still gonna be in the ground and on this side of the pool we so lucky that you know our neighbor they um have trees you know and that kind of become our garden background <laughs> you know um and also we have i have this um hydrangeas I leave all the flowers on the bush and crepe myrtle and more hydrangeas and that the holly tree by a house and the neighbor also have you know this oak tree which become my garden background too that's so awesome and on this side of the garden the other neighbor keep his property kind of like a woodland you know a lot of big trees you know the tree like behind that you know on the back that is belong to the to the neighbor and you know we enjoy them a lot in winter time back to this side we have the crepe myrtle and that is endless summer hydrangea. here again i leave the flowers on the bush because they look cute like a little ball you know in winter time although they're brown and this side too i have the you know a group of evergreen to kind of block the mess you know in winter time in the back and um in between this evergreen you know i tuck in a lot of flowers <laughs> in summertime it's gonna look so different like these are um uh, sweet williams you see this it's gonna become like so big in spring and here's hollyhock so in in summertime it's going to become like maybe this big this tall you know like tall like that um and it's gonna pop in the middle of the garden and are you guys ready for my cut flowers garden here we go i still don't cut back any flowers because look at the sunflowers see the birds keep eating the sunflowers seeds so i don't cut it back yet also that um uh salosha see the bird keep eating the seeds and that green one is um fever feel oh the flowers still blooming unbelievable so cute see when you don't cut things back you always going to see some unexpected flowers in your garden and also something magical and here's is echinacea you know the bird keep eating the seed so i don't cut it back yet also you know in winter time the little birds will 
kind of go underneath these plants, you know, and they like try to find um, flower seed that fall into the ground and they have so much fun like trying to find the food, you know, in winter time when there's nothing else to eat. In front of you here is um, Basher Baden. Okay, it's gonna bloom in early spring. And, and the snapdragon still, you know, show its color this time of the year. That's ridiculous. Here's my Dahlia. I haven't done anything with them yet. I dig some of them up and I will leave all of this in the ground. I'm going to cover it with leaves and maybe cardboard and maybe just something to, you know, give them blankets in winter time. And those are most of the flowers that are still blooming. Also snapdragon, store flowers. I am planning to do Christmas planters here uh, behind this pukera. You know, that show its best color in this time of the year. The colder, the brighter they will get. I also have one more on that side. And later still growing. And here are the spiria. You know, they lose their foliage and also their flowers, but it still look pretty to me. You know, it's give like some structure in my garden. I just love the foliage this time of the year so much. It gives the most vibrant color, even then in fall. And here is Sedum Autumn Joy. In springtime, it has like the succulent leaves from the ground. Then it bloom and it gives like light pink flowers. And in fall, it gets darker and darker. And this time of the year, they just dry and give this beautiful, dramatic color. And it will become like a, you know, cute structure in my garden in winter time, along with the other flowers that dry and stay on the plant like hydrangeas and give the contrast to the evergreen and oh my god the holly looks amazing and on this side i can't believe this still blooming uh calendula my new favorite color i want to grow this again and again and again and every year and also the self seed everywhere somebody said it's bad but i love them so i don't care if they're going to spread and they're going to self seed everywhere and oh my god look at this hydrangea flowers and when you see it from this angle Good morning! <laughs> Before I continue my garden tour, show you the Christmas decoration in the front yard, I have something to share with you. Ready? I get a haircut. <laughs> Look. It's cute. It's cute. I'm just kidding. Um, actually, I have something that I, I think I should share with you. Last night, I watched um, a garden tour video of a garden channel of other channels you know and I I feel almost like I shouldn't continue my garden tour because my gardens look would look so bad you know on YouTube and um, I don't know it's hard you know the the other channel they have like you know beautiful garden clean and nice and they have um, like winter planters, like Christmas decorate, like, you know, beautiful decorations. But then I realized, you know, there are comments, there are messages from you guys sent to me telling me like how much you enjoy my videos. 
and one of you guys sent me a message with a photo that you watch uh, my video while you on a business trip you know you said um you know it's busy but my video help you feel more relaxed more um peaceful you know that does mean a lot to me and that that bring me back here to continue this um garden tour video and i also realized that it will be mean to my garden if i am embarrassed to show my garden to other people and i think it will be mean to myself too if i don't respect my own passion so um i'm back and i will continue this tour so here is our house from across the street we are on a pretty busy road and we put christmas light on that tree we make it like a candy cane or candy crane white and red if you like to see this tree lit up you can check my last video jason is going to clean the leaves from this garden pretty soon and right there is dusty miller they so awesome the deer don't eat it and they stay here um you know almost all year round and this is the lamp post something simple and old-fashioned but eventually we might replace with something that's more um, antique i think and we decorate our tree with old-fashioned light bulbs because we love everything old-fashioned jason set it up i don't know how he did it it's pretty tall very very tall maybe he used the pool um thing and that's the deer they are pretty old we got from facebook marketplace jason and his um, mother and his nieces you know paint them up so the original look like this i think the previous owner like put the little lights you know in between the hole so jason filled this hole because it's kind of beat up and he repainted also the center Jason also repaint the center. He spent a lot of time on, you know, painting and that is his little artwork. So cute. And because he wanna add like dimension and background to this presentation, to this uh, reindeer and center, he um, bought a lot of artificial tree. I think also from Facebook marketplace and he just stake it on the ground with the garden stake oh yeah that's my cut flowers garden stake that he stole it from me but i forgive him because i love him so much technically he just put the stake in the ground and he like zip tie the tree with the stake so the tree don't blow away at night when I got home, I drive to my driveway, you know, it's like snowflake on both sides of the driveway, lit up, just so magical. And that is the bell that Jason got from his grandparent, actually from his aunt maybe, and his aunt got it from his grandparent. This bell was used in his grandparents' house. I think since like 1960 or 1950 um, yeah I'll ask him about that but it's very sentimental to him and his family and every year when mom come to our house she's she's like cry you know when she see this bell lit up because that remind her of her parent her father and her mother and how they decorate the Christmas light in their house in Seacord, New Jersey. So all the Christmas tree that we decorate in our front yard, we use the traditional lights. Jason also um, hang that wreath on that window, which is so cute. And also he come to the chimney, not chimney, cupola, to put one more wreath there. It's just so cute. And one more lamppost here. 
by our front door and that's the icicle light that he been working on it and I want to show you closely how he decorate the tree with lights you can see his zigzag he don't you know wrap around like a circle because um, doing this way it will make the tree more natural looking um, if you want to see the lit up at night you can check on my latest video okay same thing with this one too you see it's like the lights kind of zigzag you know not not wrapped like a circle i just want to thank you so much for watching until the end of the video and i want to thank myself too that i complete this garden tour you know as an adult we've been telling teenagers not to compare themselves to others on social media but you know sometimes i and maybe some of you too you know for forget about that for like you know in certain moments and we compare ourselves to others and we kind of hurt ourselves hurt our own feeling too you know so i think i i learned something about myself from making this garden tour video too um and if you are new to my channel my name is crane i am in new jersey zone seven and i go cut flowers in my backyard in spring and summer i sell them at my roadside stand um and my channel is it's about gardening obviously but i also you know like to have like a little conversation you know how to gardening with peace i mean i'm still learning it you know i i actually kind of share my experience how to learn gardening with peace with um relaxation with um my fullness you know so um that's all i need to say and if you like <laughs> my garden tour video i you can maybe check out my other videos too all right okay i'll see you later and i think next video is gonna be a lot more about christmas all right bye bye